Do I need to click go live? Mm-hmm. Starting live. Do I look okay? No. Appreciate that. Really appreciate that, buddy. We're live, right? We're live. We are now live. We're live. All right. Let's see if Wes can screw this up. <laughs> At least I'm not, my hands aren't shaking this time for going live. Why were you shaking last time? Yeah, a little bit. Deep Wes, breath. you better mute that because that's a, nope, that's me. That's you. Yeah. That's us. That's that looks me. like a. <laughs> Shut that one down. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, man, these live events, I don't know why. It's just like, I'm just like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do with my hands. My hands, every time. <laughs> um, do we have any questions? Do we want to do any questions yeah, first? Yeah, let's do a couple of those first, and then um, then we'll jump right into the uh, giveaways, guys, that everybody's excited for. Get in the groove. Huh? Yeah, get in the groove. Get in the, just to ask a question. Yeah. Once. Just, just please. It's a rowdy bunch. We don't have any questions right now. Hi from Ohio. Any questions, guys? Bring a question. Preferably something that we can answer would be good. Wow. It's just flying in. Anything? Oh, Can't keep up. Can't wait to party with you guys this Friday. Dax Thompson. Yeah, so we are going to be at EXO at the headquarters of EXO in Boise. We're flying out Friday. Hopefully we can get those videos done. Oh man. Um, anyway, try to get them uploaded and then shoot some uncuts while we're there. Try to throw them in possibly. Uh, it's gonna be a real rat race as far as that goes, but um, should be good, should be good. So yeah, we're super, super excited for that. Uh, all right. Why are you guys sweating so much? Mike Leslie asked. There's these heat lamps all around us. <coughs> It's almost a sunglass. Um, all right, uh, Jacob McCarthy, how scared did Casey get about the Bears? Um, pretty, pretty, pretty scared. It seemed like it in the videos, but. Yeah, no, I mean, Casey, Casey had an incident with a grizzly bear in Idaho, I don't know, five, seven years ago. And um, so he's been around them and he knows how fast they are and it's just one of those since he's had an experience that um, doesn't want another compounded one. to it, yeah, and I get it. I mean that it's it was one definitely. I think we were, last year when we were in Wyoming in some grizzly bear country, Trent and I were pretty naive of it until I was. we until we saw a track and it was like, oh, okay, yeah. But, but every track doesn't attack. I don't know. I, I guess. Well, if you look at the, and that's I mean I see their yeah. size. They're huge, you know. An elephant's big too. And exactly. And if you look at the odds, they're. A couple attacks this bow season yeah. across the West. You know, you figure that out if that was, you know. Sure. It, yeah. But anyway. it would not be awesome. Let's just say that. No, no, definitely <laughs> be not. Terrible. Um, all right. Um, how do you recommend? This is a great question from Hunter Anderson. How do you recommend preparing for buck fever? I get so excited about elk, I never know what to do in the moment. I feel like. Uh, one move away from Phelps in Colorado this year. I love that. That was a great question. I did, did. Jason, I'm sorry I didn't see the bottom half of that question, but um, I did. Uh, I have a I have a, a shot sequence that I go through. So usually every single time I do a setup um, on elk hunting, right off the bat I find where I want, try to find my shooting lanes, and right off the bat I move every piece of brush around my feet. So if I do get a little bit and see and moving around it doesn't pop brush around me that's one thing i do i get my grip on my bow that's another thing i go through i put my release on and then i start ranging things and i start usually i don't use my range finder too often i usually mentally range things so i have a shot sequence that i go through every single time so and, and when the elk comes in it's something that i've thought about in my head a hundred times before i when i shoot at a target i always think i've got one shot this is a bull elk I've got one shot. This could be the bull of my lifetime, or whatever you want to call it. And and that's always one too is is having the confidence when you draw back. I'm going to like the whole function of drawing your bow back. You're going to kill this elk. You don't doubt yourself. You don't you know oh don't screw this up. It's like I'm going to kill this draw back. You know and just you and and you have to like definitely talk 
yourself through this of the having the confidence in it and in even if you haven't been through that experience um, it's not something you do at the time it should be just like signing your name it should be just it should be that same it should be just a, a focus to where you've done it a hundred times in your mind and now all you're doing is going through the motions yeah yeah i mean there's a guy named joel turner uh, that does some stuff called shot iq that would be something to look up to. He, he walks through that shot sequence. I know Tom Clum just came out with something um, as well, you know, just the mechanics of that and how to execute on a shot, so. Yeah, good question. Uh, um, so Ricky, Ricky, Bob, Ricky Bobby's dad did it fairly well. He showed him how to deal with, kind of like the old target panic thing. He, he put uh, some narcotics in his trunk and called the cops on him, so he got the jitters out of his out you, of system oh. ahead of time. Okay, thanks okay. for that, Wes. Thank you, Wes. Welcome. Um, uh, why the 3500 versus the 5500 XO pack? Everybody's different. Cody likes to be as minimal as he can. So any ounce of gear that he doesn't need, he doesn't use me. I like to pack a whole bunch of stuff. So I use the 55. It's just a personal preference. That's the same size of bag. It's just a little bit taller. The neck and everything is taller in the 55. It's a little bit bigger diameter too. Ta yeah, not yeah, yeah, not much, just a much. tad yeah. bit, but it just goes a little bit taller. And so... I use the 55, Cody uses the 35, Trevor uses the 35, I believe. But, Steve, spoiler alert, yeah. we're working on something with XO. It's going to be the best of both worlds. Epic! Yep, so, uh, Freak for Hunting asks, why isn't Ty part of BRO anymore? Um, Ty moved to Montana, so logistically, like, just how it all works out, just couldn't be a part of it anymore. He wants to do the Shoot the Bull podcast, so... It's uh, it's awesome. We got to hunt with him this fall. We're gonna hunt with him some more in the future, and it was like rolled right back into good old times. So, yep. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a difference in Rosies versus Rockies when calling from Alan Knight? Oh, that's a great question. In my opinion, no. We do the same exact things on every single setup that, you know, not every single setup, but on different, the Rockies versus Roosevelt's, same kind of thing. We bugle, bugle, bugle from day one, from the time we get there, and we call often. So. Yeah, yeah. The, the biggest difference, I think, between the two is just their habits. Um, Rockies, or Roosevelt's, do not move tremendously through the day, where from, from feed to bedding and, and all of that, they're pretty minimal in mountain movements. And where Rockies can travel, you know, upwards, like we've seen them before, go from an alfalfa in a center pivot, travel six miles to bed in just the morning there. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing is, you know, Roosevelt's are super territorial because they live in this smaller circle. Um, I think a little bit easier to get on in that scenario um, than Rockies, but definitely, yeah, challenge bugle type scenario. Um, draw weight, do all of you guys shoot 70 pounds? Yeah, pretty much. I shot 80, what, last year or something? Or I've, I've shot 80-pound bow a couple different times. Um, this year was a 70-pound bow. Uh, next year, I think I'm going to go back to an 80-pound bow, I think, just because I like to shoot a heavier arrow and I like a little bit flatter. But, um, yeah, most, I think everybody else, Steve, and I think Steve, he had some shoulder issues. I think he pumped down to like 60, 64, 65 63 pounds. or 65 pounds or something yep. like that. Um, but, yeah, we all shoot pretty much 70 pound bows. I shot 60 this year too. Wes shot 60 pounds this year because he can't pull 70. Um, any marital advice for being gone so much during hunting season from Nick Mizra? Marital advice. Oh man. Communication. Communication is key. Um, staying in contact was key this year. Those DeLormes, it was awesome because it wouldn't be so long between talking to them. You could almost talk to your family every single night through text. Uh, that was a lifesaver this year. Yeah, yeah. It Satellite really, text really with that is was super nice. I mean, and then when you do get service, making a phone call, um, yeah, FaceTime. So just take the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you guys uh, upgrade bows every year? Uh, in the past, I went two years with the same bow, a Spider Turbo, I believe it was called, and uh, this year Hoyt got us the uh, Redworks. And um, they've been awesome. So not every year we've always got new bows, um, but uh, this year we, we have a new bow. So, and um, yeah, it's just year to year. I hope to get a new one next year, but we'll see. Uh, Rob Wittenberg asks, what broadheads and grains uh, arrows do you guys shoot? 
Everybody all over the board. Um, we shoot day six gear arrows. They're super, super tough. If you haven't seen our arrow videos, we've done a couple arrow videos. Uh, shoulder blade, we did some beef shoulder blades, which I know they're not elk shoulder the blades. The bone density, the is, bone density is not the same. So it was just, it's tough to really get that, uh, that um, study, what'd you call it? Or what do you call it? The matching Sim of simulation. Simulation, of yeah, yeah sure. that's right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it was, it was tough to get, but we did our best, and um, it turned out you can shoot through a beef shoulder blade pretty easy. Yeah. So there's something to do with the hide and the density of the bone on an elk versus a beef and all that, which we're trying to replicate in the future. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some tests, but like these arrows are high GPI, so I shot a, their 250 spine, I think it's 12.6 grains per inch um, with a 125 grain single bevel. Um, I shot a Strickland broadhead this year. I'm going to play around with some more stuff this next year. But all said and done, my arrow was right at 600 grains, like 605. So super heavy, but like it helped like Montana penetration behind the shoulder and then came out, you know, back ham. So there was, I don't know how many, I mean, full, almost a full pass through. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely did good. Um, Couple more. Um, do you guys paper tune your bows every time you get a new one? Yeah. I, yeah, I actually like uh, walk back tuning over paper tune, but um, start with a paper tune and then go from there. So the one thing I'm not a super fan with paper tuning is you're taking a snapshot at a given distance for like a walk back tune or French tune. You have some different, different variables as the spine recovers, so you can kind of play around with that. And then bear shaft tune um, arrows as well. So I give my bow to Wayne and Chris at the bow rack in Eugene and they're in Springfield and say, please make it shoot straight arrows. Yeah. It's what I do. Yeah. Um, Trent, do you miss logging? Do people want to know if you miss logging? Uh, there's time. I mean, uh, yeah, there's times always. I mean, I had some great times cutting timber and, and doing that. Um, yeah. I mean, on a whole, like right now when it's super cold out and almost spitting snow and pouring down rain, can't say that I do as much, no. But uh, I love what I do now. I really, really love what I do now. It's 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 a huge blessing for me. Um, Jordan Blaylock said, "Please don't come hunt Washington." Destination <laughs> point. Washington's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Are you guys ready to win some stuff? Let's get some stuff away. I'm I'm, all I'm ready. ready. I am ready. Okay. Let's see. First up, how are we going to do this? I, I think I'll just probably get down and up here. Yep. Um, We're sharp, sharp enough. Because Wes is probably not going to do anything, so. Shocker. Work sharp. All right. We got two winners. All right, we have... Uh, Stephanie Lazardo, Stephanie Lazardo, and Jake. Jake from State Farm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jake oh. Delger. Uh, Jake Delger. Congratulations, guys and gal. Next draw, work sharp. Oh, this was upside down. Yep. No, that's what we drew for. I know. I had it upside down. These things are awesome. Awesome. All right. Now, uh, first light. First light. Catalyst. Catalyst kit. Bring it. Mm. All right. Take. Best jacket right now. This is my favorite jacket made right now. By far. Drum roll, please. Bring it. Um, we have Eric. Eric. <laughs> no, Eric, uh, Patty and Brett at is the Gmail address. Or, sorry, not Gmail. Different email. Email address. Gotcha. Gotcha. Eric, congrats. Eric. Congrats. What's next? Um, stand by one here.
crispy. That's what I thought. Uh, it's not copying. Copy and paste? Copy and paste. Paste. Here we go. Crispy. Crispy. One winner. Boots. One winner. Now this is any boot of your choice of crispy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Mike, or sorry, Mark Bosch. Mark Bosch. Bosch. Lost sound on that, on one of them. Lost sound? Yeah. We got sound now, I think. I think it's just, uh... Just that camera? Just one of those. I'll just rock this. Copy. Okay. Um, all right, winner of the day six arrows, dozen of your choice, Eric. And uh, I'm guessing the last name Ford. So Eric Ford, Eric Ford app for the uh, email address. Man, can't talk tonight. Ford's the name of my nephew. Little Ford, Austin's son. Um, pair of vortex. Vortex. Vortex Vipers 10 by 42s goes to Bing. Jason. Hey, son. And uh, J Z O R O L A 423 at for the email. Can you repeat who won the pack? They didn't hear it for some reason. The audios. Yep. If you have that. The pack winner. Repeating the pack winner. Pack winner was Luke. Uh, email address is jacksonville.nwtf at. So, Luke, congrats. congratulations. Um, man, this thing's being tricky tonight. And Spot Hog Site. Spot Hog Site. Where is it? Um, I'll be right back. Standby one. Entertain, right? Entertain. All right, we'll go back to some questions here. I have no freaking idea. Gobble, 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 is WMA. Um, sounds back. Nice work, Wesley. Um, let's see. Dang, it wasn't me. Epic pack. I hear Trent running. Josh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Got it. There we go. <clears throat> Signature series, Spot Hog Sight. Spot Hog Sight. There we go. Um, I think we still have some of these available, don't we? Yeah. On the line? Yeah, there's still a few. On sure. our website, Born and Raised Signature Series, I think there's 25 or something like that. Was. Was. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how many are left, but uh, anyway, this is a site that we all shoot, every single one of us. It's, um, we shot it for years, pretty much bulletproof. Uh, winner for Spot Hog site is Ed Chet Cootie. Chet Cootie? Chet Cootie. Sweet. Cool, man. There was someone that commented that says, you guys have, like, 
You guys picked the winners with the hardest to pronounce last names. Yeah, there's not existence. a lot of that and shout outs. We kind of uh, yeah, shout outs sometimes. Are yep. Rough. So if you do email in for a shout out. Like do the uh, syllable thing. Right, the pronunciation yeah. type, like emphasis. It helps me out. Uh, we've got five um, Onyx Elite memberships mm -hmm. going to five at random. Boom. Picking. Bingo. All right, we have David. Email is D C H I S M A R at. Um, we have another Eric, and uh, I'm guessing his last name is Campbell. Eric Campbell. Eric's been a big name tonight. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Kurt. Kurt Balmer. Um, congratulations, Kurt. We got a little. We got a lady in the mix here. Sweet. Lindsay Baker. Lindsay Baker. Congratulations. Awesome. And last but not least, Ted. Ted Hilton. Hilton. Sweet. Um, all right, guys. Copy those. Get you hooked up with Onyx. And a lot of people have been asking, like, how do you guys charge your phone? Like, uh, I know questions that came out. Um, how do you charge your phone in the back country and all that? We've got little battery packs. We've used um, anchors. We've got ones called Jackery. It's just a USB simple power pack. And on one of those, like a 10,000 milliamp, you can get a solid week on it. Um, yeah, on a big dog. Yeah. If it's not too cold. Yeah, temperature definitely does affect that. So. It will definitely drain batteries way faster if it's colder. But that is um, uh, mission number one when we get back to the truck. We got a break for overnight and we're yep. resupplying, get on the charger again and go for it. But Fire up the generator. Just put it in airplane mode and rock away. So. Yeah. Sucks um, way less battery if you're in airplane mode all the time yeah. on your phones. So we got Go Hunt. We've got three Insider memberships. So Go Hunt's gonna be here in a couple days, guys. Yeah. Um, we have Charles. Charles Layden is the last name. Uh, we have Stacy Weekly. And last we have uh, Stephen. Stephen Durance. Or yeah, Durance. Yeah, looks like Stephen it. Durance. You guys, um, if you're not familiar with Go Hunt, they basically is like a lot of people ask us like, where do we, you know, do we do a draws or, or how do we figure out where we're going? Yeah, exactly. That's our ground starting point. We get on Go Hunt on Insider and start basically from there figuring out um, draws. OTC, yep. As far as that, but we've usually mm -hmm. always been over the counter, but still like draws for like. Certain units that we have points in. We got a lot of points in Oregon that we've never really drawn tags for. So let's do stabilizer. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to cash those points in at some point. That doesn't make much sense. The point's a point. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Stabilizer. Let's do a stabilizer. <laughs> uh, we've got a spider. So this, uh, we've been shooting for a couple of years, uh, actually like five or six years. Uh, cool company here local in Oregon. And, uh, but we've got, it's a, our signature series, Land of the Free and Born and Raised on it. So It's got a laser engraved into the laser bottom of it. Laser beam. It's awesome. Uh, Tim. 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 Email is GunthurJ22 at. So congratulations on that. Sweet. Um, Sweet. Okay. I think it's knife time, isn't you it? You got Gene? Gene, Gene made a machine. Right there. Nice. This is the Montana knife, <clears throat> Trevor's knife. And this one's Gene, named Gene. It's got the Gene on one side, and then the Land of the Free on the other side. And um, how cool would it be if we drew a name Gene? That would be pretty awesome. So, yep, this knife was named after Shannon, Trevor's wife. It was Really cool how Trent did that this year with picking names and getting to have a something cool. It was yeah, different. It yeah, was just definitely different. like touch of home, you know, with us. A little so. bit different. Um, it's is it Gene. No, 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 it's not no. It is Blake. Blake. Uh, Willa Blake. Willa Bay Blake at for the email. Willa so. Bay Blake. Congratulations, buddy. These are awesome, awesome knives. You will love it. I promise you. 
I think that's that's pretty much. Wesley, ha, did we miss any giveaways? Uh, uh, Bugle. Bugle, we're gonna do something cool, guys. Uh, that that's another thing I want to talk about. Uh, the Bugle tube. Um, we were gonna do. A lot of people on our Instagram page have been saying, hey, why don't you give it out to the people that have subscribed to you on Instagram or Facebook too. So we are going to do another tube giveaway, but it will be uh, on auction. or yeah, uh, yeah, auction and it will be on our Instagram or Facebook page. So if you want to get in on that slide over there within the next couple of days, we're going to give that away. Yep. And then coming up with uh, Hoyt, we have... Do we have audio? What's the matter, with? No, we have audio on the other one. I'm just looking at this one. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so coming up, we've been working with Hoyt. Something, uh, something very cool as far as uh, we did a... Uh, yes. Arbos this year, we were able to get dipped in Fusion. They're doing a limited scenario on that, and we're going to have a one and only um, bow in Fusion dipped coming up. Serious? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Jeremy's hooking it up. I'm so me, I'm gonna stay me tuned me for that on an, on a future giveaway. Kids bow. We still have this kids bow, guys. We still have the kids we, bow. We have five kids bows. Okay. Yeah, we have a. Yeah, that is true. We have five. One for every single state that we um, hunted this year. Hoyt was nice enough to give us five of them. We're looking at that camera. Camera one. Camera two. Camera two. Camera one. Camera two. Camera two. What? Two. Yep. You've probably never seen that movie. You what? Wayne's World. Oh, oh man. Millennials. Oh, Weston. Millennials. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we are still trying to figure out. We want these to go directly to kids. We want kids to be able to order them. We are talking to a couple. We're talking to Hoyt, and we're trying to figure out what they would want us to do or how we need to do that. And so it's just not everybody putting in for one. So it actually goes to a kid. So... Anyway, we're still trying to get this worked out. We're sorry it's been so long, guys, but um, yeah, that's we got five of them to give away, so we're going to be giving away a bunch of them. And yep. then, like Cody said, I didn't know it was going to be dipped, but that's super cool. Uh, a bow, a Hoyt bow yep. for an adult at the very end. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So anyway, if you do have any ideas, comment below on how we should give the, how to make sure that the Hoyt bow goes to a kid, and. Um, Right now, our deal is with our bandwidth. With our bandwidth that we have, we uh, we're very limited on time. This video went up 12 minutes. Honestly, today's <laughs> video went up 12 minutes. Finally uploaded all the way uh, 12 minutes before five. So, I mean, and then I got to work all night tonight on the next video, and then it's just a never-ending cycle until we're done. So, we just don't have a ton of time, guys. So, we need to find the. Easiest and simplest way. Yeah, to, yeah. Oh, it's, what do you got? Someone says we should be more active on Twitter. Told you. Oh, oh you and gosh. Also, Twitter. what was the last name of Blake who won the knife? Uh, the last said. name was... It just said Blake. It's just Blake, and it the email is willabayblake at... <laughs> <laughs> Not babe, babe. Oh, okay. Bay. Willa Bay. Gosh. Willa Come on. Bay. Sorry, that's my bad. Blake, name. yes. Gracious. Um, let's take some more questions, just kind of let's talk through it while let's you guys hear. Um, Chet Fisher asks, um, e Eric Chester from Hush, why is he missing from your hunts? So he had already planned on hunting um, in Kentucky and then um, in Idaho this year. So yeah, we uh, BMAC and Casey were just great friends with, have shared camps with, and it, it's rolled really good with us. So and it worked out. Yep, absolutely. Um, Uh, update on orders, Clark. Good question. We've been working around the clock. Basically, if you guys place an order Black Friday through Cyber Monday, uh, we have been getting everything processed. Basically, by mid to late this week, those all orders should be out. Um, so we we literally worked uh, like 14 hours Saturday and and yesterday to try and get all those caught up and done. You'll get an email shipment notification when your order does go out. So that's where we're at. We've got most of the back order issues solved, um, but just literally, we had families in there this weekend. Wes and I All are hands going, on deck. Wes and I are going over tomorrow. Trent's wife, Trevor's wife are gonna help. Um, so we'll have another five, five people shipping tomorrow. So we are working, um, working our tail off on that. So 
Um, let's see here. Uh, question. Are we going to be at the rendezvous? Uh, BHA rendezvous. I believe so. I don't have dates on that it's yet. It's in Boise, right? Yeah, it's, I think in, Boise it's in Boise. Boise. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. That was fun. Um, we had a good time last year. Jacob McCarthy asks, will you guys be going to any hunting expos this upcoming year? Yes, we will be doing ATA. We will, well, first off, we're going to be doing sports shows. So we're going to be doing Portland Sports Show. We'll have our own booth there again this year, along with Hushin, along yep. with Crispy, along with First Light, along with EXO, along with Off Grid. All in the same yeah, hub. I think Benchmade. Uh, Benchmade uh, hopefully is going to be. BHA Oregon chapter is going to have a booth. BHA. There. The yeah. cool thing is we've been work. I worked on this for almost a year to get like our own little backcountry hunting hall together. Um, so it's going to be actually a feature in the show. So all of us will be under one little roof there, and it's going to be super. Should fun. be a yeah. super fun time. So after that, we're going to go to Salt Lake City, and we'll be at the Hunt Expo in Salt Lake. Uh, we'll do that show the whole time, and um, then after that, we're going to hit ATA. We'll be there uh, doing a lot of maybe meet and greet stuff and meetings and stuff there. And then we will be at SHOT, too, this year. SHOT show. So come see us at SHOT. I don't know exactly where we're going to be at what time, but um, we're going to be at SHOT show as well. So busy, 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 busy first of the year. Uh, a lot of questions. Land of the Free 3.0. Oh. Does that come after two? I do and a half. I don't know. Period. I don't 2. know. 2.01. Got something different coming for them. Yeah. Think, we, guys, okay. comment below what you want to see us do. I mean, yeah. we're going to always do elk hunting, guys. That's just our, that's what September we do. September of that month, we are going to be chasing people. We'll always be, always be hunting elk. <laughs> um, but um, we've got some other ideas. We actually aren't sure what we're going to do this next year. But uh, believe me, we will be chasing elk around the hills. I promise you that. Yeah. Justin Winter asked, when do you guys start using First Light? Uh, 2009. When they were first yeah. born. Yeah, it was a year after they started. We've been in First Light, and I mean, they were the first ones to come to market with Merino, and it's a game changer. So uh, They were our first ever sponsor, weren't they? Pretty much. Yeah. Spot Hog, actually. Was Spot there. Hog and First Light. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So, and, and another question from BB Wyoming. Uh, Spot Hog, is it right or left-handed? They make it both ways, and it, but it is specific. You can't just have a right-handed and swap it over to the left. So if you're a left-handed southpaw like me shooting, you got to do that. But they uh, have right or left-handed mm -hmm. yep. in our signature series, too. Um, do you guys do any elk hunt giveaways? Oh, like the hunt itself? Yeah. We have never done that before yet. We get asked this question a lot. Um, it's a tough one for us because we definitely, we would, we want to, we share hunting camps with a lot of other people as far as in the industry and stuff, but yep. um, our Septembers are very, very important to us and it is one of the most special times of our year and um, anyway, what, we may or may not one of these days, we're not sure, but uh, there could be some cool stuff to come. Yeah, we definitely, so as you guys are doing this giveaway, we are going to be taking one lucky winner plus their friend on a spring bear hunt like what we did last year. The state's to be determined whether we're going to be in Idaho, Oregon, or Montana. But that's, um, so as you guys have entered in these these giveaways, we will be drawing for that at the Land of the Free Rap Party podcast um, in January. So that should be you're are, if, you, if you've entered in, you're already in. You can share to get more entries. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Um, there is a guy that won tonight that had a ton of entries, like thousands. So and there was a bunch of them that had one. Yeah, I saw exactly, one or two. So you 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 have a chance. Just it's it's oh, yeah. kind of like Nevada. You always oh. got a name in the hat. Oh yeah. Um. So. Um. Here's another. Here's a good one. David Boyder needs some ideas for guys like myself looking at an elk hunt for the first time next fall. Would you recommend a state archery rifle? Where would you start? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And um, what I would do is, West, would you have a question? I was gonna say, I just have an opinion. I would say Wyoming where you can hunt archery and then rifle. Could you let me talk? Yeah. That'd be good. That's why I raised my hand. You yeah. called me. Yeah, I know, but only don't speak out of turn, okay. <laughs> but Wyoming, you can't over the Colorado, counter. you can too, can't you? 
What's that? Or Montana. Montana. You can rifle hunt after you Correct. Hunt, I think. Yep. Okay. yep, Montana. So that that's it. Go go ahead. My whole thing is is we get a ton of people asking us questions. This is a great question. Don't get me wrong. This is a great question. But we get a ton of people asking us questions. Where do I go hunting? What do I do? Guys, planning, honestly, planning the hunt is part of the hunt. And we would never want to just tell you, hey, you need to go to Wyoming. You need to go up this road. You need to park by this tree. You need to go up towards that rock. And there's going to be a bull in that. Because honestly, we don't know. But let alone, is that takes the fun out of it for you guys more than anything. So planning the hunt is like one of our... We get jacked about because we're trying always on Onyx, we're area. on Go Hunt, we're looking, trying to find out the area, trying to find the bull to cow ratio. Then we jump on Onyx and we're trying to look for bedding areas, we're trying to look for elevation. It's fun. That is the fun of the hunt. And, and, and we're never going to tell you. It's all about the journey. And that, like, uh, kind of sidebar, we, we, Trent and I talked about this. There were some comments earlier about, like, why don't you guys talk about units where you hunt yeah. specifically? We would never share that just for the sake of the other people that hunt that area. There's, um, I mean, we, we, we learned this year in Colorado, there was a lot of people that came to Colorado, not necessarily because of us, but ended up in a similar, you know, in the same area. And the last thing we would want to do is have a, someone's hunted there for 20 years and have an influx of people that could, I mean, not, I mean, hunting's a sacred thing, right? Spots, all that. So in the day of digital era, a lot of people are asking what unit, what trail, where do you guys go? And we're just never going to talk about that. And it's, and it's not just us trying to like hide and keep that information for ourselves, but people that have worked their tails off to find those spots as well. So just, uh, I guess that's my rant, right? Right. But to get back to the question, the great question is maybe pick a, a, a elk friendly state. Like Colorado's got a ton of elk in it. Um, not the highest population. Yes. Sure. And then, then do your homework, like go on, go hunt. And maybe you're not looking for a 300 class bull. Maybe you're looking for a bull, or maybe Lots you're looking for a cow, or any elk. Or 30 bulls to 100 cows. Exactly, yeah. any elk unit. Break it down from there, and it gives you all that information, the insider, and then then pick your place from there is what I would recommend. And um, and give yourself at least a week is what I would say, at least a week just to go and um, and do it. And it's honestly not as expensive as everybody kind of makes it out to be. I mean, you're not paying for food because if you're hunting like us, you're hunting off your back or in a camp that you'd normally be eating food at the you house. you got to anyway. eat food at home. got to eat food. Right. And so you're paying for a tag and you're paying for gas money is mm -hmm. what you're paying. You're paying to get there. And then the time off work, obviously, that's a real thing for um, everybody. So I, it, it just, I don't know, just try to break down those barriers and I just... I encourage anybody to go out there and do that. But that's yeah, a great and, question. And that is, I mean, it's it's one you may if if you can start to uh, get a point in Wyoming, buy the spend the fifty dollars. You know, and those will open up in July. They go through the end of October. Uh, buy a point in Colorado. There's some great opportunities in Colorado that aren't general, but they're a draw, which we haven't done yet. But um, you know, I will be. It, yeah, it's definitely there's some great opportunities there. Montana on the general has got some great opportunities. Um, it's it's tough. I, I mean, to yeah. say like one way yeah. or the other, it, it all depends on your hunting style. If you're an archery hunter, um, I would highly recommend that over a rifle starter, but that's just our experience and how we do it. So One thing I would say is Oregon, mm -hmm. Roosevelt, if you want to come to Oregon and kill a Roosevelt, it is very very difficult yeah is is you're going to be a little more user friendly on going eastern oregon for you know elk or or another state uh roosevelt's are they're they seem to be a different animal 100 percent. yep so. yep so um let's see but casey's done it twice once in two years <laughs> You know, both years he's tagged out, so he thinks it's yeah, pretty, pretty it's easy. Yeah, it's really easy. Um, Tom went back, said, did you like the results of the Day 6 arrow switch this year? Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah th those arrows are legit. They're super thick wall, and like when we did a destruction test, you can't hardly bust one. We shot them into center blocks and ricocheted them off, off of plywood, off of uh, aluminum chunks, shot it right through a, a giant solid piece of aluminum. And I mean, they're very, very tough. Very tough. Um, John Hicks said, do you guys have good relationships with game wardens in the states where you hunt? Are there any weird rules in each state that are a pain? Great uh, question. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we've, yeah, actually don't have the, I mean, we haven't even ran, well, you ran into a conservation officer. Yeah, I ran into them in a couple states, but um, yeah, game wardens, we actually, that's another tip that people, call your game wardens. 
If you're if you're wondering about a unit or something, they know it best. They travel all over it. They patrol it. They know where the elk are. They know the populations. Yeah. Um, it's a great great um, useful reference to have. But what I was going to say is. Um, Know your laws before you get there. There's a lot of laws that you have to keep the sex of the animal on a quarter, and that's coming from Oregon. We didn't have a clue about that when we first started hunting yep. out of state. So there was something that someone, as thankfully we got there, told us, hey, make sure you keep the proof of sex on the animal. So it, just little things like that, you know, make sure you know before you get in a predicament that um, that you're not not wanting to be in. So Yep. Um... How does the giveaway work? Camden Cox asked. So we've got a link, uh, put it in the description here. It's on our website. If you go to bornandraisedoutdoors.com, click on giveaway. You enter in your name and email and you're automatically entered from now until every contest that we go. So that's Once you're in, you're pretty in. simple. Yep, you're in, you're in, and there you go. Um, let's see here. Camera rig hanging on your backpack straps. That, um, oh yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Literally, just Google Amazon. Um, uh, you peak had it. Design, like peak, peak design. Peak. Okay, peak design. Got peak. it. Yep. Um, how's Trent's finger from last year? Oh, uh, good. Good. I don't have any feeling in it on the end of it, and it's still scarred, but it was good. It was good. I didn't necessarily take care of it like it should have been. Yeah. So. Uh, Kelly McCurdy asked, if we enter for spring bear hunt, can my 13-year-old go? If, 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 they, they, if they have hunter safety, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So. Um, I recommend hunting in pairs for safety. I've seen that a couple times. Yeah, no, that's a good, you know, we've always hunted in a group. Um, I we've, mean, we've, we've, we solo hunt a lot to, to deer and, and like Trent rifle elk hunting. Um, but a pair for safety, especially a backpack trip. And if you don't have a ton of experience, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, not only you'll, it, it'll be more enjoyable um, for one, most likely you're going to hunt better because you're not going to be worried about some of the, you know, some off uh, experience. I know we had a guy, I remember on the podcast with the call in that he had like a cow moose charge and oh, yeah. he had a bear. He, had a bad, like, bad he literally had something that we've never experienced and that was his first trip ever. So. Yeah. Um, hunting in pairs is definitely a, a good safety precaution, and I think you, you hunt better, you hunt smarter, you can kind of bounce things off each other. Especially for elk, having that collar. Yeah, back having a collar. Elk, it's, it's... Yeah, yeah. So I would uh, definitely encourage to find, you know, and, and and finding a good hunting partner is a challenge, but once you got somebody, it's you yeah, know, yeah, totally. I'm still uh, looking. <laughs> did Trent get an elk with his rifle? Question mark. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes, I had a chance to go out. Uh, when was it? I think it was the last weekend of season. Yeah. And uh, anyway, got away from just a little bit. Weekend. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was I was successful. Yes, it was uh, my alone time out there, just by myself. It was it was a blast. I I honestly, it was a special special time. It really was. So yep. don't have any film of it, and I've never really talked about it. I, but um, yeah, it's it was it was a blast for me. Um, uh, let's see, um, there's one there. What does it say? What does it mean? Pineapples. What does it mean? Remember, it started, it started the chat. I don't even know what he's, he's talking about. pineapples, you get a hundred dollars. He's, Aaron's going to donate it to a charity, right meow. Right. So. If I said, <laughs> It's, it's, it's entrapment. Hey, yeah. somebody wants to know if Wes is a good hunting partner. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Wes, I will say, is the clumsiest guy I have ever seen <laughs> in the woods my entire life. Just oh. I, hiking behind him in Idaho, I just wondered when he was going to break his ankle. I was incredibly worried about the oh. workman's cough insurance that we had. There's a story in a podcast that's going to happen. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, and all this poking fun, I do want to clear it up. Like when Trevor and I are on a podcast or an uncut or whatever, it's brotherly love. We're poking fun. I'm always poking fun at West. West is always poking fun at me. It's just what we do, guys. It's it's uh, office banter. How about that? Yep. Yep. So um, hopefully you guys are enjoying the office season. We've had super fun uh, kind of sharing more behind the scenes of aside from hunting. We, we want to keep this channel going and growth. 
and it kind of gives us another outlet to talk to you guys and express where we're at, what feelings, struggles, wins, wherever we're at in life, um, not just in the elk woods. So I know last year it was pretty daunting, honestly, like this project, the idea of a day by day was pretty new. We <laughs> thought we could just not breeze through it. We knew it was going to be a lot of work. And with just Trent and I doing it last year, it, it was, Hunting that long, and, and you know, you were gone for 53 days, I was gone for 30 some, and then coming back in the office and every day trying to hit upload on a time crunch. It took on a life of its own outside of just the videos, and it, it was high stress, but oh, man. The, the community support behind you guys here watching this now was pretty amazing. So um, this year, it, things have been better. We've been able to manage. Oh, yeah manage time a little bit better with Wes's help. Um, He's been and, doing a good job. And having the warehouse going. So basically He's, where I'm going with yeah. that, we are not going to let off the pedal on the channel. Um, we took a pretty good break last year, but this year we've got some things in place to keep cranking on content. We've got uh, winter steelhead coming up. Uh, we still have waterfowl season. Uh, Trevor's been obsessed with it lately. Terribly. Like, obsessed yeah if you haven't catch some of his instagram stories while he's on his lunch Damn. break uh duck hunting yeah the dentist so uh don't have an afternoon appointment if you if you go to trevor <laughs> plan on being late <laughs> um so yeah we're we're just uh, having fun with it so just appreciate you guys and absolutely yeah it's uh yep <clears throat> it's gonna be a good year all right let's uh wrap it up wrap it up all right, guys, um, this concludes another giveaway. It's crazy. We have two left, right? Wyoming, Wyoming and Idaho. Idaho. Yep. Wow, man, time flies when you're editing video. Yeah. So, uh, guys, anything else? To, uh, just thank you. A big thank you to all the orders on our website that you guys did. Did you already turn us off, probably? No, oh, I didn't. Okay, why are you giggling over there? I'm, I'm having a good time. Enough. I'm liking... Enough. Jeez. All right. West. See you guys tomorrow on the Uncut. Wyoming, day two. <laughs>